A wise philosopher once said, time is money, only differences, I own it. And y'all can say what you want about Pitbull, but my man's got a point. Time, arguably one of the most precious resources. Ever since I was young, I've been told that one should be wise with how he spends his time. Yet, I think there's a problem with this adage. Not just that it's cliche, but even more, it's selfish and wrong. You see, we often assume possession over time. His time, her time, my time. And while this perspective may be true and practical in some instances, in many others, it's not. As I've grown up, I've grown an awareness of the social responsibility that comes with the resource of this time. In this video, I'll first extrapolate on this issue, then conclude with practical suggestions on how we can live with a broader, more egalitarian perspective. In economics, there is a phenomenon called the tragedy of the commons. This is when people overexploit a shared resource because there is no incentive to show restraint. Overfishing, overgrazing, pollution. In a similar way, left to his own devices, man will selfishly use the resource of time harming his surrounding community while seeking his own benefit. So how do we combat this tragedy of commons? Well, in the former cases, society has two options. The soft power carrot, propaganda campaigns that raise environmental awareness, and the hard power stick, government regulations and taxes that restore proper economic equilibrium. Yet when it comes to the resource of time, a government stick isn't such a feasible option which leaves a heightened societal awareness as the only solution. Well, what would this awareness look like? Well, in our heads, most people accept the golden rule, you know, treat others how you want to be treated. Yet when it comes to the concept of time, we often fail to recognize the full extent to which our actions affect those around us. This is best understood with an example. Back in my day, when I would leave the high school parking lot, I had two options, turn left or turn right. Waiting for an opening to turn left would take on average 30 seconds because it's kind of hard. You have to wait for the cars to cross, but to turn right, it only took 10 seconds. However, turning left actually took me home two minutes faster than trying to turn right. So obviously most days I would turn left because that route was about 100 seconds faster. Yet here's where things get a little more complicated. If there's a car waiting behind me, should I turn left or right? Well, now turning left not only means that I have to wait 20 seconds longer, but also the car behind me. Thus, I'm wasting 40 seconds total in that parking lot. However, I'm still saving two minutes with the left route, netting an 80 second profit, so the rational choice is still turn left. All right, but what if it's final speed and everyone's getting out at the same time? The parking lot is chaos and over 20 cars wait behind me. Now my decision harms even more people. Turning left not only costs 20 seconds of my time, but in addition over 6 minutes paid by others. And this is assuming there's only one person in each car. The cost is likely much greater. With a self-centered, individualistic perspective, I might be tempted by a gilded personal net gain of 100 seconds. Yet with an empathetic communal perspective, I realize the extent to which my decision harms those around me. The two minutes I save on the quicker left route no longer justifies the time I waste in the parking lot for myself, but even more, the time I waste for others, which is at least five minutes communal net cost. If every car in that parking lot wanted to follow me home, uh, like for some reason, uh, and they faced the same decision I did, and each one selfishly chose to turn left. As a community, we would be wasting hours of precious time. This is why we need to grow in our awareness. We can represent this situation with a quick graph. When turning left, the personal net benefit is always 100 seconds saved. But the cost of my decision depends on the number of cars behind me, which is represented by the blue linear function. As we saw earlier, with only one car behind me, the net benefit equals 80 seconds. With 20 cars behind me, the net cost is 300 seconds. So when is it socially acceptable to turn left? When the personal net benefit is greater than or equal to the net communal cost. 
In graphical terms, this is the area to the left of when the two lines cross. When there's five cars behind me, the 100 seconds I save turning left equals the 20 seconds delay times five cars that I waste for other people. But if any additional car pulls up to wait in line, then I have a social responsibility to bite the bullet and turn right. This is a cost-benefit scenario where one sense of moral and social responsibility suggests that if one person is paying for something, then the other person reaping the benefit must be gaining equal or more than the other person is paying. Otherwise, the community is suffering a net loss. If a car in front of me will save a lot of time by turning left, like I have no problem waiting an extra 20 seconds behind it, because as a fellow human, I can understand and altruistically see the greater good. But if he's only saving five seconds, like then I'm gonna be like really frustrated. Thus cost benefit scenarios like these are ruled by the law of equivalent exchange. Net good must equal net cost. Now not all situations are like this. Say you take a girl out on a three hour date. You're taking up three hours of her time. So does that mean you owe it to her to spend three hours preparing for that date? Certainly, you should spend some time dressing up and maybe buying flowers, but a three-hour prep time seems extreme. Or what if during church service, you're supposed to give a five-minute sharing in front of 200 people? Does that mean ethically you should prepare for 16.7 hours? I call these effort expectation scenarios, in which the criteria of social responsibility is not one of equivalent exchange, but instead of meeting each expectation, with correlating effort. When you ask for someone's attention, often they don't expect a one-to-one -one ratio of your preparation time to their summation of their attention time, but they still expect at least some form of preparation. For the case of sharing in church service, which was a true example, my congregation is really nice and pretty lenient, so they only expected like 87% effort, you know, as, as long as you're speaking from the heart. So I felt that my responsibility was to make sure that I put in at least the preparation time for at least 87% effort. The effort expected must be met by the effort put in. Now, that's cool for that scenario, but practically, how do I determine how much effort is expected of me? Is it just a random number that you make up? Or is there some function that could help describe it? Well, that would most of the time depend on the quantity of attention consumed, which we'll represent by the variable A. This attention consumed is the time that you're taking in, asking others to pay attention to you for a given period of time. Thus, A equals the amount of people times the time length of your activity. For example, a three-hour date has an A value of 180. A five minute speech to 200 people has an A value of a thousand minutes of attention consumed. A 50 minute speech to 200 people, 10,000. And lastly, Avengers Endgame, a three hour film watched by over 100 million viewers, has an A value of 1.8 times 10 to the 10th. Once we know the A value, we can estimate the effort expected as a function equal to 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 times the log of a plus 1 over the log of a plus 1 plus 1. Okay, while obviously subjective and not perfect, I believe this graph does like a decent job in representing the trend we see in reality. Okay, first let's note the y-intercept at 50%, which suggests that when a is close to 0, which represents like less than a minute interactions with strangers, this expected effort is really close to 50%. The graph starts to increase, but at a slowing rate of increase. At A equals 180, our three hour date, we see that our expected effort is 84.7%. At A equals 1000, expected effort is 87.5%. And we see that as A increases into the thousands, the graph really starts slowing down. At A equals 10,000, expected effort is equal to 90%, and for Avengers Endgame, 
expected effort is about 96%. Notice how the graph approaches, but never reaches an expected effort of 100%. I put an asymptote at that line because I believe that a person can never fully reach 100%. I mean, you could say that I'm pessimistic, but that would literally mean sacrificing everything to be at a level of 100%. So I think as more people choose to pay attention for longer periods of time, it's realistic for expectations to increase, but it's not a direct relationship, and one should never expect a complete 100% effort, hence the asymptote. Cool. So now we understand the expected effort, which we know should equal the effort put in, but how do we quantify this effort that is put in? There's obviously many factors at play, but the most important is arguably the time one spends to prepare beforehand, which we will represent with a variable t. Again, this is incredibly subjective, but I chose to represent effort put in as a function of time spent preparing, f of t is equal to 0 0.7 plus 0 0.3 natural log t plus 1 over natural log t plus 1 plus 1. This is similar to the expected effort equation, but different in three distinct ways. First, time variable t is measured in hours, not minutes. Secondly, the y-intercept is at 0 0.7, which means even with no time preparing, we can spontaneously produce an effort of 70%. In reality, this start percent varies from person to person, with some people more comfortable on their feet than others. But we all have something that we can produce spontaneously. We don't start at 0% effort. The last difference is that this uses natural log instead of log base 10. And that basically means as t increases, we approach 100% quicker than we did with a. Let's look at our examples again for a clearer picture. Our three-hour date with an A value of 180 had an expected effort of 84.7%. When we plug that into this f of t function, we find that one should spend about 1.6 hours preparing for a three-hour date. It looks something like this. As you're cleaning yourself up, buying presents, putting on makeup if you're a girl, or if you're a guy, you do you. Uh, as you're doing these things, you're raising up your level of effort until you reach what's expected. In this case, at least 84.7%. If you're surpassing this level and spending more than 1.6 hours to prepare, then you're a sim. Nah, just kidding. You're a treasure, and I hope your boyfriend or girlfriend appreciates your effort. But anyways, let's just run uh, quickly through the next few examples. Five minute speech for 200 people. The effort is 87.5%. Prep time is 3.1 hours. 50 minute speech for 200 people. Effort was 90%. Prep time is 6.4 hours. And lastly, Avengers Endgame. Effort 96%. Prep time 664 hours. Okay, so the graph obviously is a little off when we look at extreme cases such as Endgame, which definitely took like thousands and thousands of hours to make. However, we get a general idea of the relationships between the attention consumed the effort expected, the effort put in, and the time put in to prepare. While we previously looked at cost-benefit scenarios, which are held under the law of equivalent exchange, effort expectation scenarios are governed by the law of Uncle Ben. With great power comes great responsibility. Wielding the attention of the masses is terrifyingly powerful, and it demands a great deal of effort that's keenly conscious of the stakes. Prep time does not directly equal attention consumed. It's usually less. However, one should strive to meet the expected effort with an equivalent amount of effort put in, such that our function of attention consumed equals our function of time prepared. All right, that was a lot. And now you may be wondering, so what? It's fun, I guess, to nerd out over the concept of time, but is there a point to this? And I really do believe that being aware of time with this perspective is important. And now that this idea has been planted, I hope you'll start seeing these graphs pop up again and again in your everyday life. I'll just 
quickly end with sharing a few personal examples. For me, I saw the harm-benefit graph a lot in school. A teacher is too lazy the night before to spend a few extra hours to come up with an actual lesson plan, so he just wastes the period handing out busy work. It's so frustrating because we all know that this worksheet he spent five minutes grabbing off the internet will never be useful on a future test or in life. The three hours that teacher saves is not worth the net of 47 hours he's completely wasting. Also, teachers will say that there's no such thing as a dumb question, but students will still find a way, like even in college. And like students will waste whole minutes asking about a question that was literally on the assigned reading that week. So in a 300 person lecture, we waste five hours of communal time because this dude is too lazy to spend 15 minutes of his own time going to office hours. Like this harm benefit scenario, like literally triggers me. And it's one of the reasons that I made this video. But anyways, I often see effort expectation scenarios in the world of entertainment. I know a lot of my friends love Twitch, but I honestly don't understand the appeal. Like in my mind, this streamer has thousands of viewers spending hours just watching this streamer live her life. And I don't care how interesting this streamer is. There's no way she's putting in that much effort into her content. I mean, she can't because it's live streaming. It's supposed to be all spontaneous. So she's consuming a large amount of attention and her expected effort should be high and she should be putting in time to produce quality content. But for streaming, she can't. There's no preparation time put in. Oh, and sorry, I wasn't talking about Miranda Crossgrove, iCarly's Fire. Okay, anyways, I like, like, I enjoy watching Twitch strip, uh, like, I enjoy watching the Twitch clips, because those are edited and short, so, like, all the highlights are condensed, and I feel like I'm getting more for my money's worth or my time's worth, but just, like, regular Twitch and just regular live stream, I just can't see the point, and I know it's a controversial opinion, but that's like how my brain is wired to view it, and I can't see it from another perspective. Um, but anyways, I like in a similar way, but maybe more relatable, I get really annoyed when low effort entertainment content receives so much attention. Like when a big name artist knows he has loyal fans who will listen to whatever he puts out, even if he puts little effort into making a song. Or like when a YouTuber gets big and they stop putting in so much effort because they assume they have this loyal subscriber base that will watch their videos anyways. Or when Netflix produces like actually good new shows and then they just let it fall off during the later seasons because they know it will still retain viewers. And then if it becomes too expensive, they'll just cancel it. And I feel like when you know that you will have a large viewer or listener base, that you have a social responsibility to put legit effort into that work. Okay, but taking a step back, we covered a lot today. First, we emphasized the tragedy of the commons, noting that time is often wasted because of our self-centeredness. We concluded that heightened societal awareness is necessary for the community to prosper. We outlined what this awareness would look like, whether in a harm-benefit scenario or in an effort expectation scenario. And lastly, we explored some examples practicing how to expand our awareness. The great Pitbull once said, time is money. And as a college student, I'm short on both time and money. But as we grow as a society, becoming more conscious of how our affection, how our actions affect those around us, taking to heart the laws of equivalent exchange and of Uncle Ben, then perhaps in the near future, we might only be short of money. I just want to say a quick thank you for watching guys. I really appreciate your time. Um, and if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. I'll try to upload once a month.